Don't move, don't move, he's looking. I didn't realise how open I was then. I didn't realise how open I was and how close he is. He's getting closer, isn't he? Active during both World Wars, Sunk Island Battery was a two-gun installation originally built upon the outbreak of World War I. Its purpose was to defend the approach to the Port of Hull and the Royal Navy fuel depot at Killingholm. It was reactivated during World War II and a new installation, Stone Creek Heavy Anti-Aircraft Battery, was constructed nearby to provide air defence. A battery was first proposed for Sunk Island in 1911. Sunk Island, which is a flat low-lying area, had ceased to be an actual island in the 19th century, was chosen due to its relative proximity to the navigable channel along the River Humber. The battery's main armament was to be two 6-inch breech-loading quick-firing guns which were installed within concrete emplacements embedded within an earth rampart. Barracks, workshops and other ancillary buildings were planned to support the garrison. Construction was particularly difficult as no rail or road infrastructure led to the site. Nevertheless, by October 1914, the towers had been built and the guns were operational. Upgrades were made to Sunk Island Battery in February 1915 with electric searchlights installed on the foreshore. An electrical generator which was originally installed at Paul Point Battery was relocated to the Sunk Island Battery. Concurrently barbed wire was erected around the site and trenches dug to provide anti-personnel defences. A port war signal station was installed to the rear of the battery to act as a combined fire control post and command centre for the examination service, an organisation tasked with clearing vessels for onward transit along the river. All this activity led to the increased use of the battery, but the site often flooded at high tide as the water table rose around it. Accordingly, the War Office provided the battery with a network of paths and roads to ensure all-weather access. Let's now explore this site and see what secrets it still holds. So, we're in a woods. We're in a wooded area and with Paul, ALW Paul, and we've found a gun position. This is it. This is one of the... This is a large pillbox this one out. This is on the peninsula of the River Humber. So this has been a large either watch hut but it's got these big beams in. So this to me looks like it was a magazine of some sort where they've had to sling large heavy items in. All the snails are here exploring snails. Many of them indeed. Yeah, so this isn't a pillbox, this is some sort of store, magazine store of, of some kind. It's had, it's had shelving in here, and it's got the lifting beams. And lots and lots of snails. They live here now. There isn't just this here though, there's plenty more of other things and two really exciting things that I'm going to show you later on. So let's get going. There's Paul. It's pretty cool isn't it? It certainly is. I think the tower is over there that's been knocked down. Oh. Yeah, it looks like it's just up there. It was a nice, a nice building as well. If you clamp to the front, I think it had two floors. You can climb up to the second floor, you could. Yeah, but that's sadly been demolished. I'll see if there's any pictures online, but I've got a feeling there isn't going to be. Uh, 
trying to find the pictures I've got. Yes, please. Might be difficult, but I'll try. Paul came up here many years ago. Um, as a boy, in fact. So, there used to be something over here, which I'll show you now. You can see here, see how it's dug out? This used to be a magazine, this used to be an open store for weapons. That's why it's dug out and flat like this, it's not a natural lay of the land. It's been what we call mechanically handled. They've had big diggers in. Now anything close to the edge has been flattened like this. This was probably a small store or a pillbox. But it is, the brickwork looks World War II era to me. There's also something else here. This has also been destroyed. The really interesting stuff's over there in the woods, which I'll show you soon. Central bricks. Not seen many of those for a long time. I think that says Leicester. Leicester bricks. So everywhere we're looking, we're looking for a tower that Paul knew about, but there's a big pile of rubble there, and everywhere we're sort of standing on lumps of old concrete, big, thick, heavy gauge concrete as well, the type they used in the war. Yeah, everywhere we're looking, there's pads. They look like pads for aerial, or an aerial. That's what they look like to me, these square pads. Square blocks in a, in a row. Look like they've had an early radar on it, or something along those lines. Someone spoke them deer. Is there anything to the right? Because someone's... Somebody, somebody's walking in the distance. Right over there. White dog. One, two, three, four, five, six. Deer. Yeah, in the distance over there. Yeah. Can't really show you. There's a farmer out there. We should go deep in the woods to stay out of the way. Yeah, we don't want to get seen by him. Just in case he comes down this path. Yeah. Yeah, more concrete pads. There's actually a... There's actually uh, brickwork in the floor here. There's all brickwork on the floor. So what are all these concrete pads under? I think they're an aerial, for an aerial. Loads, isn't they? Yeah. So they've had an early radar in here or something along those lines. You usually build an aerial up off these. These are anti-tank blocks or anything like that. Yeah, they're too low. Yeah, too low. Just drive straight over them. I think they're for an aerial. And they used to have like a big, they called it a bedstead, like a big bedstead aerial. I'll put a picture up of one now. Uh, and they were uh, just an early type of radar. They were like a fixed image radar that you had to decode. It wasn't like the on display ones of today. There's another pad here, look. So this has been a radar station. Or oh, it's been a gun emplacement with a radar, would be my estimate. More concrete. So there's some more concrete here. I don't think the tower's extant anymore, mate. It looks like an old painting. Is it an old No, it's not. That is a cover. That's an old door for stove or something like that. Ow. 
That's a door off the stove, I think. Oh, wow. Right. We're going to go show you some gun emplacements now. Where's that guy gone? He's walking oh. that way. Yeah, all them birds have just took off. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a row of blocks there, look. Don't know if you can get a picture of that, Paul. Mm -hmm. See them row of blocks there? Oh, yeah. And then I reckon there'll be another row of blocks. I'll try with these. Yeah, there's another row of blocks here, look. And that is... That is the, the bedstead for a radar. If we look here. The other one there. This has had a radar on it. Or a large aerial. Another one there. And it looks like this one's been dug out and moved from here because there's a hole where it should be. And then there's another one there. And the really interesting stuff is here and here. These are big gun emplacements. So let's go check those out. Right, so what we've got here is a gun emplacement. You can see the studs on the top where the gun used to be. Can you make those studs out? So that would have had a large gun on it, quite possibly a 3.7 inch anti-aircraft gun, which was like the standard gun of the Second World War. Now, there's some old railings here. This isn't railway track, but this was probably some of the steel work, because there would have been ladders up the back of this, probably about here, there would have been a ladder section. to get up onto the turret up top because the ladder's missing now. Yeah, you can see, you can see there where there used to be a ladder. There was probably a hoist as well to hoist the ammunition up and there would have been a little ready use store up on top to keep the ammunition ready for the gun. The gun barrel will have come down and then they would have reloaded it from down here. Well, that's had a big gun on it. And then these would have been the ready use magazines for the gun. So let's go inside and take a look. Very old saucer or pan there. Very old indeed. bars on the window indicating it was an armoury at some point. I think he's walking past the lake just looked as if he was walking towards us but he's veered off again. So I okay. think he's past us. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So he's gonna end up over there somewhere. On that line over there somewhere. Yeah so we're just going inside now. I think these have been visited for a very long time. There's a very little litter. We never drop any, but no one else has dropped any in that pan that's just on the window. We've got some shelving there, and the uh, it's all painted white inside. This looks like it used on a big shelf across, where they've probably read it ammunition. And then this would have had a lamp in it, an oil lamp. It would have had an oil lamp in here with a flame on it, no glass lamp. And the heat would have gone up, the exhaust would have gone up there, and then out of here. And then air can go in there and out of here to keep the lamp going. And that was so there was no sparks or flames anywhere near the ordnance because you don't want sparks and flames near shells. I believe 
I've got some footage of one of the doors for this out in the wood. We were looking at a door and we didn't know what it was. And I think it's one of the doors off this. I'll cut scene to that now. It would have fitted on there. And then round here, there would have been further magazine storage for the weapon. The ammunition would have been kept in here. Go back out. I'm going to have a look around the outside of the gun now. Hopefully, when we get back on the riverbank, I'll be able to drone this. I'll just walk you around the outside. So, fire control cables, stairway going up, and there would have been a hoist over this end somewhere. You can see parts that were left from the hoist. That would have been part of the hoist, I believe, for the weapon. You can see part of the old roadway here, like tarmac on the road. And that's that's been the weapon. There's the other one there. That is like a, a mirror image of this one. Oh yeah, two anti-aircraft weapons. You can see the profile of the magazine roof in there. And then the guns would have been on top. So I'm just going to take a walk over here now and show you the other one. And then there's a generator room, or what I believe is a generator room over there as well. So we're on our way there in a moment. I'm going to take a look at that soon. That's all collapsed. That looks like a viewing platform of some sort. And it's all there. Uh, and there's something else in the tree line there. So we'll check those out soon, so stay tuned. Got another gun position here. Got Paul on watch there. He's, he's just on there. He's on lookout duties. Just to make sure we don't disturb anyone. anti-aircraft gun and you can see here where the ground has been dug up and it's been made higher where they've banked it up for the weapon yeah that's a bed for a generator so they've had an electrical generator in here Yeah, and there's vents in the roof, the vents there. The windows have been bricked up at some point when they've realised they didn't need the windows, so they've bricked the windows up. And then that's been a generator bed. And it's got a little sluice for the bilge, so if the, the engine leaked, it wouldn't uh, leak all over. We'll take a look around the front. Hope you're enjoying these explores. If you are, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. This looks like it was a fuel tank. And then there are the rungs of a ladder to get down. And then that would have been a pipe to pump the fuel out, perhaps. And you can see here the slips where they've bricked the window up because they haven't needed all of that space. We don't need the light in the generator room so there's been a blast wall on here which we commonly see at other generator sites there's been a blast wall they've demolished the blast wall because when they've decided they didn't need this anymore they've tore it out they've tore the generator out to scrap it seriously damaging the building we've got here Looks like an old coolant tank of some sort, and this is a really old milk can. You see these in vintage shops sometimes. 
on my own. That's an old milk can by the looks of that. And that's some sort of tank for coolant. Generator bed. Not much else in here though, it's all been taken away. And standard flat bricks. And over there is the uh, weapon storage box that I showed you earlier on at the beginning of this video. We're just moving over to these positions now. Paul's been keeping watch for me. Good man, Paul. Good duty on stag. Yeah. yeah. We can keep hearing gunshots nearby. Puts you a bit on edge, you know. Oh, look at that. You can, can you see the studs? Can you make them out on top of the gun? Where the gun would have been mounted to. And then they've pulled them studs away when they've removed these guns after the war. When they've decided they didn't want them anymore. Oh, give up. Sorry about that. Paul's just discovered, just in front of the gun there, they just noticed this in the mud. That is a railway line. That is actual train track. So this may have even had a railway to it. Or a short railway, just like a short railway. Now a gauge of light. To the river, because the river is just over there. So they could have brought the ammunition in. So, yeah, it looks like there's a rail there. There'll be a rail here somewhere. Just yeah. under the mud. If it's narrow gauge, you'd be about here, wouldn't it? Yeah. But you can see where there's been steel work on the outside of the gun. Yeah. And it's all been removed after the war. But luckily, old concrete's not worth anything, so they've left that behind. Unless that was a weird means of transporting the shells to each gun placement. Quite possibly, yeah. Well, let's have a look at these observation places now. So just found in the woods, we believe this is an oil tank and this is a water tank. So that would have been a water tank for the soldiers to drink from. And then this would have been an oil tank for oil lamps and for the generator. And this is part of the old shelving. Just left in the woods. We're hearing more gunshots over there, a couple of hundred metres away. There's a creepy teepee there. There's a ring here. That could be part of an old searchlight or part of a weapon that's been stripped down. It's quite large diameter. Isn't it? It's as big as my foot, it's a big diameter that. And then there's a random teepee in here, the creepy teepee. An old gal's bucket that's rotted away to almost nothing. So we've got here what looks like an old telecommunications room or something along them lines. Because inside there's a big wooden plinth on the wall. And loads of little cables. Big multi-cores as well. So it's had a big, it's had a big steel door on it. So they wanted to protect it. There's lots and lots of these multi-strand cables. And then this big big wooden board to like mount them all on. And then another one there. This this corresponds to my thoughts that this had a large radar within it. I think that. I think these are telecommunications wires. Did you buy all that? I've never seen any of yeah. These are power cables, you know, like power, electrical power, because they're a lot thicker. The, the cross-sectional area of power cables are much larger, whereas these have got a large outer sheath, but the actual cores within, they're only 2.5 millimeter cores, and they're all twin core, which is 
which is what's associated with DC signalling and early radars because it was it was just pulses you send a pulse out and you wait for the pulse to come back but this is an old radar marshalling room that's what this is telecoms marshalling that's pretty special that because these are usually ripped out well, when I said, I thought that's unusual that it certainly is Paul <sighs> It's been a centre pit there, it's been filled in. And then there's these cables on the other side. One will be one will be incomer from the outside world and one will be going out to the radar array. Now I've got one more place to show you and we believe this is a commanding officer's observation position. Now this is where they would have controlled the firefight from. So any enemy aircraft coming in. Ah, I've just gone in. This is a firing trench for any advancing troops. They would have been. They would have been uh, in this trench attacking. So I just thought I had a quad bike, but I think it's a ship on the river. Now what we're going to look at is this. Looks like the turret of a tank, but there would have just been one person in there on observation. So, yeah, that's what's wrong with that. That's why this has collapsed. Yeah, this would have had telecoms to the rest of the position. There would have been, uh, this would have been, this would have had the fire control within it, which is where these uh, position such and such, watch and shoot, watch and shoot, which means open fire when ready. Now, yeah, that's been a telegraph pole that's right away to nothing. And due to this concrete not having steel steel within it, it's just all failed. It's such a shame because that would have been a really cool fire control position. In the observer's position there, in the centre of the screen now, the observer would have um, stood up in there and this is where the order to fire would have been made from. I'm just going back to what I was saying in the wall down there. Now in the centre of the screen there's no steel coming up. That's why the concrete has snapped. Because concrete just binds other things together. It doesn't bind itself together very well. And it's full of it's full of pebbles and they don't bind anything. That's why this structure's failed. There's too much sand in the cement. If I had a hammer I could just knock bits off that. It'd just all come apart. It's been built in such a rush. But when when there's a war on and you're short of materials, you use whatever you've got. There's some more stuff in the forest that we need to go look at. So we'll go in there now. Yeah, so we're just filming in the woods and Paul's found these strange concrete bases uh, that aren't immediately making any sense. So we're thinking these are part of Old workshops area, there's a telegraph pole there, stuck out. So they've had a telephone here. I bet these have been the radar rooms, and this would have housed the equipment, the actual radar equipment. We might find the other end of those cables that we saw earlier. We might see those here somewhere. That looks like a plinth for something that has been very big indeed. See my foot's there, that's how big that threaded bar is. Another threaded bar there. There's something large concrete over there as well. Been a lot of equipment here. What brick have we got here? Durabon. Like a what, sorry? Like a relay room because of the shape of the building. Yes. I think there's been chemicals dumped here because I can smell it. Can you smell? smell? Yeah. Like they've been dumping waste chemicals here. The definite smell of something that's been, you know, someone's been fly tipping waste here, like chemical waste. So it really does smell. It smells of cleaning products almost. A lot of dead trees as well, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, there's a lot of death here. Where the trees are. Yeah, there's something there that's all bashed up. There's a lot of animals and animal tracks, so it isn't killing the animals, the chemicals. See that again? That looks like, they look like pads for another radar aerial. Here we've got, got one, two, three, four, five. And then there's a row of them here. There's one, two, Three, four, five, six. Yeah, so there's six here. Six pads in a row. All along. And then another six behind it. So I think they've had I think they've had radar here. Radar control guns. Yeah. Yeah, another concrete pad. That would have probably formed part of the drainage for the the base that was here. See the way the land is, trees, trees, and then this is all flat. There's been a building on here. There'll be a concrete pad underneath. So it's probably had a Nissan hut and it's been removed. But the base is still under the grass so things don't grow as well. Paul's just found something. I think he's found a dugout of some sort. <sighs> wow, that's cool. Terracotta gold? I'm getting a snap of that. I was going to see it, I know you like your bricks. Check that out on my Instagram, people. So there would have been the entrance there, and then this was a dugout, similar to what you will have seen in First World War movies. Well, that's what this is, and it's had them wooden beams above, and they've rotted through. Then it's been repaired at some point with plastic to try and preserve it. Quite some time ago, though, because that is also rotten. That is a fire control trench. That would have once looked out over to the river. Now I found a cable inspection pit here. This would have been part of the system we saw earlier, you know, the thin core cables that were in the small room. I think this was part of that, and it was part of the radar station that was based here. There's also been a there's also been a building here. Interestingly shaped building. That's what I thought. And it's a relay room because most, re most railway relay rooms are built to the same kind of specification. I was just that. thinking that, yeah, because a lot of the railway stuff was built by the war ministry after the war, you know, when they were upgrading. So a lot of these buildings do look similar. Yeah, so we're very, we're very sure this was either heavy radio, large scale radio, or radar. We think it's radar from the layout of the blocks and the shape of the shape of the aerials. We think this was a relay room. There. Now that's all that's left unfortunately. I will
crazy man, a spooky little girl like you. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and press the like button, then hit the bell to receive notifications of upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.